Hi students, today I'm gonna to show you how to do um, the mineral lab. This is actually one of my favorite labs to do with students. And every time that I restart this lab, I always go through the background information, which for this lab is located um, at the beginning of the lab. And I always like highlight and make little notes to myself throughout so that I can remember quickly how to do each part of this lab. So I've gone through and I've highlighted a little bit, but I wanna show you today how to get and do some of this mineral identification. Your box of minerals, mine came really messy and they were all in the wrong places because it just shuffled around. So I took the time to reorder all of my minerals in order. You don't necessarily need to do that for this lab because what I'm going to say is these rocks that are listed here are not all in your box in the first place. So I'm sorry that these two don't match, but actually that kind of makes it more fun. And you are actually just going to, I'm going to let you pick which of these 15 uh, minerals that you look at. And total you need to do, let's see, three, you need to do six, seven, eight. So you need to do eight and you have 15 choices. So you can pick whichever ones you want. I'm gonna pick this really fun, messy, messy mineral right here. Or actually this one, even that might be more fun for you guys to do. I'm gonna maybe pick this one. Um, this looks like a big piece of gold and I'm gonna tell you up front, it's not. It's the fool's gold, which is called pyrite. So I'm gonna first look and observe its color and its color to me is gold. You can put anyone down as your first one, so you're welcome to copy this example. The luster on this, luster means like how shiny or dull this is, and this luster definitely is very shiny. I can see why people thought that they were striking gold. So you can write shiny or metallic. And then streak, you're gonna take the little piece of tile in your lab kit, and you're gonna try and streak it across the plate and ooh, look what it does. Can you see that? It actually leaves a streak there. So the streak color is black. It leaves a black streak, okay? So I'm gonna write black. And then the hardness. The hardness is determined using the Mohs hardness scale. And I wanna show you this, you can look this up if you don't like this Mohs hardness scale, you can look up another one on the internet. It's spelled M-O-H-S. It's not hard to do. But basically, a mineral that is 2.5 or less could be scratched with your fingernail. And I can tell you, I cannot scratch this with my fingernail. It is scratching my fingernail instead of me scratching it. And then the next one is to scratch it with a penny. You have to get the penny yourself, so make sure you have that um, ready to go. So you have to use a penny. So you can try taking a penny and scratching that, and it did not scratch it. And then you can move up and try scratching it with a nail, like not fingernail, the nail in your lab kit, okay? And mine was actually underneath my box. And this one does not appear to be scratchable by the nail. So I'm gonna try scratching it with a piece of, or see if it can scratch a glass plate. And it cannot scratch a glass plate. So I'm gonna see if it can scratch, be scratched with a street plate. So it seems harder than that. So I'm gonna put it 7.5 plus as the hardness. And then the crystal structure. The crystal structure, there's a guide to be able to do that, but basically you're trying to see um, how it is shaped on the sides. And it looks like it has a pretty flat crystal structure that kind of goes, you know, it's really flat in a lot of places. Um, so you're gonna look up the crystal structure here and I would definitely say that it has a general 
crystalline structure. Not that it has no structure, but you don't need to specifically identify which structure, but if it's on there and pyrite is not on there, I don't see it listed, but pyrite is going to have a very, have very flat um, edges. So it definitely has a crystalline structure. So I'm going to say that it is maybe in like, granular maybe in grains and that the cleavage that is how it breaks so if I was able to break a chunk of this off how would it break would it crumble in my hands or would it break like on little jagged edges I would say it definitely would break um, on jagged ev edges and here's is some pictures of that, of how you think it would break. To me, it almost is like one of these. Like it would break, no, I would say it would break more like this mounting like of feldspar. So I'm gonna just say that it has cleavage. Um, the cleavage is maybe in two different directions. So yes, and I'm gonna say maybe two plus directions. And then the specific gravity. Specific gravity is just you taking a guess about its weight compared to another mineral, okay? In actual, like if you are, so I'm gonna pick out this one. These are about the same size. Which one is maybe heavier or lighter? Um, if you were going to do this scientifically, you would take it and put it in a beaker of water um, that was filled to the very top and then see how much water came out of the beaker and then basically weigh that amount of water and weigh the rock and see which weighed more. So I would say this is lighter than number eight. Okay, so um, that part you can't really do at the end till the end. Um, so it's heavy, but not as heavy as eight. And you can see here that they have it like lined up what it should be. Um, so I, I can't really write that down. So I would say it's compared to some of these other ones that are the same size. It's kind of in the middle. It's kind of in the middle of where it is. Okay, so I'm gonna put those, put those back put these two back and um, just write specific gravity. I'm gonna write, um, I'm gonna do mine as low, medium, or high. Low, medium, or high. It's gonna be one of those. And I'm gonna say it was medium. And the mineral name of this one, I actually happen to know it. It's pyrite. And so I'm gonna write it down. You can see that that's not one of the choices here, but that's okay. You can pick any minerals that you want to out of the box and figure out what they are. If you're not totally sure at the name at the end, um, you can look up common minerals. Um, take some good guesses and see if you can figure that out. Do that with each of the minerals in your box and see what your favorite ones are. Um, there's gonna be some cool ones like, um, Here's like a muscovite. It's one of my favorites. You can see that like my muscovite, um, it actually peels. You can actually peel it um, like a paper, like an onion. It's really cool. And like that one, you can see on the cleavage paper is a one directional. It peels like a paper in its cleavage. So this one for me is my muscovite. So I would write down all the information about that. Like the color is kind of a shiny white. The luster is shiny. The streak, the streak on the streak plate. So I'm gonna wipe the black off of my streak plate and I'm gonna streak it. It leaves no streak, so I would write no streak. And hardness, can I scratch it with my fingernail? Oh yes, I can. So it's hardness would be a one, at the most, a one or a two maybe. The crystal structure on this one would be um, kind of very flat, like kind of, I mean, you could almost say, um, it says, 
orthohombic or cube, you could say that, um, that it's flat, just a very flat um, crystal structure. The cleavage, like I said, is one direction. It just peels in one direction. The specific gravity, this is a very lightweight substance compared to anything else. So I would put it as a low specific gravity. And then, like I said, this mineral is muscovite, spelled M-U-S-C-O-V-I-T-E, muscovite. So do that with the rest of the page. There's no questions to answer. It's just trying to get you to see how you tell um, different minerals. Have fun with this lab and get it turned in. Thanks.